Hello, this is a video on how to calibrate an OP903, typically used on axle scales, weight pads, whatever it is. So first, check your cable. I notice a lot of times these five pins could be yanked out and the cables will be sticking out. A lot of times it will break the solder points and if this cable is damaged, that weight pad will never weigh properly. So make sure this cable on the five pin end isn't yanked out in any way. And run your hand through the cable. On this cable pull out, you will notice a smush spot where a weight or a vehicle wheels ran over it. With this, it will not accurately weigh and give an error stick. So cable will have to be replaced to this weight pad or axle scale. We should do a supply at our warehouse so you can always purchase from us. Or I've also seen cuts like these where entire cables cut. Uh, sometimes very light object but sharp. Drops on the cable itself and damage the cable so the cable will have to be replaced so run your hands make sure this five pin connector is not damaged run your hands to the cable and feel for any smushed or cuts in the cable next i'll show you if the cable is fine what to do on the op903 to calibrate it i am in front of my op903 or t903 either way will be the same so I'll just turn on the indicator Okay, so the first step will be to get into calibration. So hold down the switch and print button at the same time for two seconds. And you should see F1. So we're now entering into calibration. So I kind of wanted to show how I only have two pads connected. So what you should do, if you have two pads, for example, connect your first pad into LFW, the left upper port, then your second pad in RFW on the top right port. If you have three pads, You'll connect third pad on LRW, and if you have all four pads, you'll be the four pad to RRW. You'll see why in calibration, why it's easiest to put pad one on LFW, pad two on RFW, pad three on LRW, and the four pad on RRW. But I'm assuming you did this ready. Make sure your pads are connected. We're still in F1 setting, so now you press print, and you'll see something that looks like mode like an M O D E 2 so I currently have a set to 2 meaning I have 2 pads because I have 2 connections if I have let's say 3 you can press the store button or the up arrow to make them to 3 for 3 pads or axle scales or 2 whatever you're trying to weigh if you have 4 pads 4 axle scales or if you only have 1 but for, for a lot of people, we see we have two, for example, an axle scale. So mode two, that's good. Press print. You see unit one. Unit one just tells me that one is set for pounds. So if you're weighing in pounds, leave that as one. If you're one of our customers that weighs in kilograms, you could press the zero button to make that zero. So now everything you weigh is going to be in kilograms. But for a lot of our customers, we leave it as unit one for pounds. And I press print. And you'll see dot zero. So this tells me the amount of decimal places that I want on my scale. For example, if you want 0 0.1 pounds, let's say 1,000.1 pounds, you can set this to one if you want. But for most of your customers, that's not important. We want the whole pound. So if you're weighing something that's 15,000 pounds, it'll be 15,000 pounds, no decimal places. So that's what it means by dot zero. We have zero for no decimal places. Press print and you'll see E10. So E10 will tell us the graduation settings. This is by how much it's gonna increment the scale. So if it's within, let's say, 157 pounds, it'll round up to 160. Goes up by, by 10. For most of our customers, that's fine. Um, if you wanna change it, you can press store. That'd be within 20 pounds, then 50 pounds. That's for one, two, five. But 10 pounds, within 10 pounds, is usually correct for a lot of our truck scales, axle scales, way pads and you can press print full zero so this says for the maximum capacity of your scale I have full zero um, you don't have to change this, this is for the maximum capacity but if you're interested it'd be full one to make press the store button to make it to one and so it says the maximum capacity that scale can handle 600,000 this is why you don't have to worry about it 
they sh most people are not going to be weighing that high anyways. Just press print and we'll go on to calibrating each pad. So press store button to make that into two. So F2. Press print. So now you'll see scale one. So now we're going to select our pad of choice. Our scale one means pad one, which is our LFW pad. If this says scale two, that would be the RFW pad. And if it was scale three, it will be LRW pad we're trying to calibrate. And scale four will be RRW. This is why it's important to know this is one, this is two, that's the bottom left three, and this is four. So in this case, I want to calibrate my pad one, LFW. Press print. Okay, we're in cal zero. So this is for the zero calibration with no weight on the pads, the axle scale, anything at all. So we will set this to one by pressing the store button or up, up arrow. Now it says cal one, meaning we're setting the zero calibration for pad one, which is my LFW. I press print, make sure there's nothing on the scale right now. That shouldn't be there. It's on level ground, nothing underneath. I press print. And we'll start counting down and it should say zero. Okay, so now it got the zero calibration for pad one. Next, it will say span zero. This is my weight calibration that I'm not trying to use. So we're in span. So we're currently working on pad one. So we're gonna make that span zero into pan one. Span one by pressing the store button to make that into one. Press print. Now you see. 1500 that's the calibration weight we're gonna place on scale so we have your test weight for example my test weight it's recommended to have 40 percent of the max capacity of your pads your axle scale whatever you're trying to calibrate uh, your scale could handle if the max capacity let's say is 10,000 pounds recommended to do 40 percent of that at 4,000 pounds can you do 1,000 pound on 10,000 pound scale which is 10%. It's possible, but your weight might not be so accurate if you're weighing something that's in the seven, eight, nine thousand pound range. It will start losing its accuracy. So it's recommended to use something closer in weight to what you're gonna be using. So in my case, I'm gonna be trying 4,000 pounds. So I could press the pounds kilogram button to move left. So I move left over one. So since I'm using 4,000 pounds, make that five into a zero. I press the store button. I keep pressing store till it goes to zero. So now it says 1,000. I move left over again. Now I have four or the one. Press store button. Now it says four zero zero zero, which is 4,000. So now you're gonna place your weight on the scale. With my weight on the scale of 4,000 pounds, I am now Remember this is for pad one. Press the print button. It should count down. And it accepted the calibration and I'll exit it out. Now you see F2 setting. So we just calibrated pad one. So that's how you do a calibration of one pad. But let's say now I want to do the calibration on the second pad, pad two on RFW. I just go back. I'm in F2, press print. Now it says scale one, I'm gonna say scale two for pad two on RFW. Scale two, press print. Now you'll see cal zero, it's a very similar process. This is your zero calibration, so check nothing on your axle scale, your wave beams, your pads. Make sure it's all clear, whatever you're connecting it to. So this is for the RFW, which is pad two. Press store to make it to one, and press the print button. See countdown and it should accept you zero. Okay, it accepted my zero. Now it says span zero. So very similar process, we're gonna use the same test weight. Press the store button to make them to one. And then I press the print button. Now this one is set to 20,000 pounds. I'm not doing 20,000, I'm gonna do 4,000. So I move left, a thousand places flashing. I'll make press store button to make them to four. I still have a two here. So I wanna remove the two. Press the pound kilograms, 
Now the two slashing and press zero to make that to zero. Now I see zero, zero, 4,000. Now I'm gonna place my 4,000 pound weight on my weight pad or axis scale. Now I have the weight on the scale and now press the print button and we're 4,000 pounds on the, the pad. Okay, so now I have calibrated my two pads. If you had a third pad, you do the same process, but now scale three for your LRW. And if you have four pads, you do the same for RRW. This is for people that are trying to set up their multi-axle accumulation weight slash print or set up the date and time setting. So we're gonna go into the F3 setting, pressing the store button to make it into F3. This is all detail in the manual, but I'm just showing you for now. Press print. And you see ALE00. So this is the amount of axles that you're gonna be using this with. For example, we have customers that have a, they're gonna be weighing a three axle truck. So in this situation, they're gonna put one axle on the axle scale and with the next one on, the, on it and then the third one and add up all the accumulation weight. So, and this is the setting we're gonna set it to, to do that. So example, if you wanna be using two axles on your, uh, 903 with your axle scale weight pads, you only have to put two. If you have you're gonna be weighing three axles, then you set it to three. Press the start button to make them three. So it's A L E to three in my situation because I want to set up for three axle accumulation weight slash print. So A L E three, press print. You see S N zero. This is not important. This is for cargo number. There's O P E zero zero. This is also another one that's not too important. So just press the print button, PF2. And some of these might be a little different, but currently this is set for accumulation print. So if you're gonna be accumulating print, make sure this PF is set to two. If you just do normal print, just put the weight on the scale or the pads and print, then you can just leave it at one. But since I'm setting up for accumulation, for a three axle axle scale, make PF to two. Press print. You'll see this is like an M. So the print mode, leave it in manual, especially just leave it for accumulation mode, but leave it for everyone. PC, if you're gonna connect to PC, this is the battery for the PC. Just keep pressing print, CP4, that's not important. Uh, off, that's for time, the uh, off, that's for the backlight. Okay, so now date. This could be used for some people. So date one means it's in month, day, year format. If you're somewhere else and you wanted to print out day, month, year, you're gonna make date to two. For most of our US customers, we keep it in month, day, year for printing. So I'll leave it there. Now this is the date function. So currently it's 6 18 2021. So but let's say it was 619. I could make this number flashing to 9. I could make sure it's the 6 month and make sure it's the year 21 2021. This version since it was already correct We'll leave it to 18. So that's today's date when time of filming, 6, 18, 20, 21. Press print and this is the time setting. Realize that this time setting is for in military time. So my situation is 12, 25 when I'm filming this. So this is the seconds. Keep pressing it to make zero. If you go over it, just press zero button, go down. Now, next will be the minutes. So, I'm currently, she set this to 25. Oops. The 25th minute. And this is for the 12th hour. So the hours, minutes, seconds. And let's say if you were 3 p.m., this is military time, you're gonna add 12 plus three, so your time would have been uh, 15. 
So it'll be 15, 0, 0 for 3, 3 p.m., for example. If you realize it is in military time, it might be a little confusing. Uh, but that's how you set time, so very important for your printing. Now that is set, and that should be all, and your calibration should be set, your date and time should be set, and printing for accumulation mode. So I can press the check button to save and exit. So now you got out. So I calibrated my left front wheel, for example, and now I want to place my weight on it. My 4,000 pound weight showing a 4,100, 4,090. That's pretty close to what the actual weight of it is. But whatever you're using, try testing it around with different weights. But that should be the process how to calibrate each pad.